Let's take that same patient. Here's my same patient, but now uh, instead of placing isocenter uh, midplane, let's place isocenter uh, posterior. So we'll say ISO is posterior here. Uh, same APPA setup. Okay. Um, I'm going to assume that, that everyone here knows how to find equivalent square. Okay. Two times the length times the width divided by the width, width plus the length. Uh, you're definitely going to need to know that. So to keep uh, to keep everything simple, I won't bore you with that part of the equation, uh, and we'll just say what our equivalent square field size is. Okay, so for whatever reason, we place isocenter back here, but uh, this is going to be a uh, non equally weighted um, plan. So we're going to have the same thing. We're going to have 15x. I'm going to deliver 180 centigrade, same patient. Okay, we're still 20 centimeters APPA thickness. Except this time I'm 15 centimeters from the front and I'm 5 centimeters to the post. Okay, so I'm going to weight my AP um, let's say 60% AP and 40% to the PA. Okay, so unequally weighted. I'm still, dis I'm still prescribing 180 centigrade at the isocenter. Okay, so let's work through the equation. Inverse square law, uh, you know, OAR, wedge factor. These are all the traditional ones that we have. Okay, prescribing to the isocenter so we can toss OAR out. We don't have any wedges, we don't have any trays. Okay, so let's say I have an equivalent square field size. Well, 15 centimeters. Okay, so let's work this out. MU from the AP is going to be uh, 0 0.6 times 180. Okay, S sub C is 1.021. S sub P is 1.007. My isotope line that I'm going to prescribe to is 100%, so it's 1.0. And my inverse square law, again, inverse square law for this particular machine calibration is always, always, always the same if we're prescribing an SAD. It's 102.8 divided by 100 squared. Remember, it's source to calibration point divided by source to point distance. Okay, So in this case, it's 1.057 uh, for this particular setup. Okay, My monitor unit for the PA it's going to be, I'm 40% from the PA, so I'm 0 0.4 times 180. Okay. This time, my equivalent square, I'm going to put at 20. Since I'm closer to the target, my closer to my tumor, my jaws are going to have to be bigger, most likely. So I'm 1.039 for my collimator scatter factor, 1.010 for my phantom scatter factor. My isodose, my isodose line is 1.0, and I'm 1.057, again, for my inverse square. Now, what's different? TMR. TMRs are going to be different here. So I'm at 15 centimeter deep from the AP. So if I look in my tables at 15 centimeter depth, for 15 by 15 field size, for 15 MV, 0 0.783. Okay, my TMR had better be larger for this case because I'm not going to as deep of a depth. So let's look up 15 field size, 5 centimeter deep TMR, 0 0.978. Okay, well let's cr let's crunch the math. So 0.6 times 180 gives me 108. I take 108 divided by 1.021 divided by 1.007 divided by 1 divided by 1.057 divided by 0 0.783.
and I get 127. And you from the PA, 0.4 times 180 gives me 72. Look what my total dose, 72 plus 108 gives me 180 centigrade. So I take 72 divided by 1.039, divided by 1.01, .01, divided by 1, divided by 1.057, divided by 0.978. Gives me 66 MU. Half the MU. So half the MU from the PA than from the AP. Why? Two reasons. Number one, we're giving 40% of the dose instead of 60% of the dose. And the second reason is I'm not as deep. I'm at one third the depth that I am going from the AP. So parallel opposed, APPA, it could be left, right, lat, unequal beams, unequally weighted beams.